Learn Java the Hard Way, Exercise 3, Printing Choices.java. Okay, we're going to look a little bit in more detail about the print line command in Java. In the previous two exercises, you've been using only the command system.out.println, but, um, but there's another option that we'll be looking at, looking at in this exercise. So, first of all, we're going to go to the terminal and we're going to compile it. So, make sure that you um, change into the Java code directory if you aren't already, and use the Java C command. Printing choices.java, and that compiles without errors. Then we're going to run it so that then I can talk about it. Printing choices. There you go. Okay, so there's the output right there. So first of all, you may remember that in previous exercises I told you to type everything exactly the way I've typed it, including spaces and capitalization and all that sort of thing, um, because it was important. And it, and it is, but I, I wasn't being honest with you in one way. You notice that on line 7 I have nothing there at all. Line 11 is just a blank line. Line 14 is blank. Um, the compiler ignores that. It doesn't matter whether that line is blank or not. We could remove it. We could add two lines there. It doesn't matter to the compiler. So um, usually when I'm doing that in my programs, I do it just to sort of separate out things that are sort of logically chunks of code. Um, in this exercise, I did it just so that we could have this conversation. Um, so it doesn't actually matter whether you include blank lines or not, although I would recommend that you do include blank lines in the future if I've put them in there because it will make it easier to debug your code if your line numbers match my line numbers. Um, and I've tried to put it in logical places. So anyway, um, so let's talk a little bit about this. So you'll notice that the blank line does not affect the output. So we print on, on line five, we print the word alpha on the screen. Then on line six, we print the word bravo on this on the screen. On line eight, we print Charlie on the screen. But you'll see down here in the output that there's no space between Bravo and Charlie. Like Bravo's on one line, Charlie's on the immediately following line. So the fact that we put an extra blank line in our code did not affect the output in any way. And that gives us as programmers the freedom to add blank lines as we see fit. And it doesn't change what the computer will interpret and do. Okay, so in line 10, you'll notice that I have a print line statement where there's nothing inside the parentheses. So it just says print line, and then there's an open and close paren right there with nothing inside. So what that instructs Java to do is to display nothing and then move to a new line. And you'll notice that that's what we got in our output here. After delta, there is a single blank line, and then, and then the output proceeds. Okay, so beginning on line 12, we have not print line, but print, system.out.print. So how does that output differ? Well, we displayed the word echo, which we do. But you'll notice that Foxtrot is on the same output line in the terminal window as echo is. So echo and Foxtrot are on the same line. This is because the print line command displays whatever you give it and then moves to a new line. The print command displays whatever you give it and then doesn't move to a new line. So it leaves the cursor right there after echo. So kind of like right here, it leaves the cursor. So that the subsequent command, whether it be a print or a print line, will display picking up on the same line. And so we see that's the case here. Foxtrot will display on the same line. Then this golf command, it displays on the same line. But then because the golf print on line 15 is a print line command. After it displays golf, then the cursor moves to the beginning of a new line. So that's what we have going on there. Then we use a print command to print hotel and leave the cursor there. But then on line 17, we follow that by a print line command that just moves to a new line. So it prints nothing, then moves to a new line. And then, um, and then we print India, we print another blank line. Okay, so the other new thing that I did there is on line 21, which is the last useful line of code that we have, I didn't display just one thing inside quotation marks. I displayed six things. 
So you see this is a string, uh, which is just a, a bunch of letters in quotation marks. Uh, the word this, and then this is a space, and this is the word is, and this is another space in quotation marks. Then it's the word a, the indefinite article, and then a space, the word test, and a period. So those six strings right there are all being added together. Technically, we would say they have been concatenated. Um, we concatenate all these strings together to make one big string. And then we print it on the screen. And then we move the cursor to a new line. So this is effectively the same. It's not quite identical, but there's no meaningful difference between the two at this point in your understanding. From me just doing a single print line statement that says this is a test, all in quotation marks. But uh, later we'll be needing to break things apart. And so I'll want, I wanted to sort of get you used to seeing what that's going to look like. Um, just, just so that it wasn't new to you because we'll be learning some other new stuff there. So, um, this is kind of a hard line to get right probably. If you have a syntax error, it's probably on this line because starting the quotes, putting your word, stopping the quotes, putting a space, a plus sign, a space, another quotation mark, that's going to be difficult to get right. So, but if you can do it, then, then that's good. Um, I don't know why I put a blank line on line 22. Uh, in fact, I'll probably delete that by the time you see this video. Uh, there's no study drills in this exercise, but there's one thing that I wanted to show you. You know that print line displays whatever you tell it and then moves to a new line. If we put nothing in the parentheses, then it prints nothing and then moves to a new line. Print displays whatever you give it and then doesn't move to a new line. So what happens if we try to do a print that has nothing in it? So I'm going to try to add a line of code here. System.out.print and just give it empty parentheses. I'm going to save my code. I'm going to go here and I'm going to try to compile it. What do you suspect will happen? Oh, that's a really long error message. Whenever you get a long error message like this, it's important to just sort of look at the at the beginning. So this is saying in the file printing java on line 18, there's an error. And the error is that there's no suitable method found for print. And essentially what they're telling you is that it is not okay to have a system.out.print statement with nothing in the parentheses. And then this gives you a list of uh, methods that it, it does have. A print with an object in the parentheses, a print with a string in the parentheses, a print with an array of characters in the parentheses, and, and why they don't apply. It's sort of... Um, unnecessary information from your standpoint at this point, but uh, what you can take away from that is that that's not okay. So we're going to delete that again. We're going to save it. We're going to make sure that our code still compiles. Java C printing choices dot Java and then Java printing choice lowercase h printing choices and there you go. So, um, relatively easy exercise this time. I promise I'll make up for it in exercise four. So, thanks and happy coding.